any Alaska hunt, whenever you leave camp, you need to be prepared to shoot an animal and process it at the kill site without having to come back to camp for supplies. So let's talk about the things that you should bring with you out into the field uh, that will allow you to do this without a bunch of extra effort. Uh, we'll start off with the backpack. Uh, this is a very simple backpack. It's made by Barney Sport Chalet in Anchorage. Um, it has a top flap on it, one main bag, and two side pockets. A very simple bag. You really don't need much more than this. I've used this particular bag for guiding for a number of years and it's worked really well for me. Um, a couple of things to watch out for. Generally, I avoid a bag that has a divider across the middle of it or you know a floor in it that you can open to create more room. I really don't like those because if I unzip that floor and I'm trying to put a moose quarter in this bag, which is by the way going to take up the whole size of the opening of the bag, it's really hard to get them in there. You got to jam it in and bounce it up and down. Uh, when it comes to that zipper flange, it's going to hang up right there and it's going to be hard to get it all the way to the bottom of your pack. Secondly, when you pull it out of the pack, it's going to hang up on the way up too. So it just creates a problem. You're much better off with one main bag and uh, it'll slip all the way down in there. Now what I do is I'll take a trash compactor bag and use that for a pack liner and that keeps me from uh, getting blood all over the inside of my pack from those moose quarters that I'm packing out. Uh, keep in mind that trash compactor bags come in flavored and unflavored. Uh, you get the scented ones that are designed to, I guess, prevent odors with your trash, uh, and the unscented ones. If you use a scented bag, it's gonna, that scent will permeate your entire pack and everything that's in your bag. So uh, get the unscented ones and load it right in there and you're good to go. Now that trash bag will also help your meat bag to slide right into the pack a lot easier. So I use that only when I'm packing meat and then of course I'm going to rinse that off and clean it uh, in between uh, animals. Secondly, my side pockets. Uh, this one's got two main side pockets and both of the side pockets have a pouch that runs down inside all the way past the bottom of the, the pocket. Uh, these side pockets are big enough to accommodate a spotting scope or possibly a uh, water bottle. I take my Nalgene bottles and I'll fill them up and store them right in there. Uh, a backpacking stove or what have you. This pocket on the other side has a flap on it, a bellows arrangement that allows me to open that up quite a bit more. And then there's a couple of clips on the bottom that accommodate a uh, pocket that holds the buttstock of my rifle. And the idea behind this was to allow me to slip my rifle down in there and hang on to the butt of it and then cinch it down really good so it's nice and secured when I'm packing. The problem with that is when I'm packing um, there's a possibility I could run into a bear or maybe I'm still hunting and I want to shoot another animal. I want that rifle in my hands the whole time. So what I use that for is my spotting scope. I'll mount my spotting scope on a tripod and I'll slip the scope down in between the pocket and the bag to protect it and then I'll put the legs down here under these cinch straps and then I'll just clip them around the legs to hold the legs in place. I can actually slide that spotting scope up a little bit and tilt it and I can glass right here from my pack. I can look through the spotting scope without even having to take it off my pack. So it's really handy uh, if I need to get access to my scope really quickly. Okay, so that's the pack and uh, now let's talk about what goes in it. Okay, first thing you need to have with you is your game bags. And we'll talk about game bags in another segment because there's a lot of things you need to know about them. Uh, but in this case, we're going out to the kill site, so I want to have game bags in my pack that I'm likely to carry with me. If I use cotton bags, they take up a lot of room in my pack and they're heavier. So I go with the synthetic bags and I use those for getting my uh, meat from the kill site to camp. So I'm going to take my synthetic bags with me. Another item that we're going to take with us that I don't have in front of us here is a small tarp. I'll take a 10 by 10 blue tarp and I use that uh, to lay underneath the animal while we're working on it and then when we, when we get him skinned out and we roll him over, um, we can roll him onto a nice clean surface with that tarp and I don't get sticks and leaves and debris all over my animal carcass while I'm working on it. So a small blue tarp. I can also use that tarp for an emergency shelter if we have to stay out overnight or I can use it to make a meat cache at the kill site and get that meat up off the ground so it can start to dry and cool and I can tarp that area and keep it from getting rained on and so on. A couple other items 
Um, these are extender straps that I had made. Uh, I haven't seen anybody else uh, use anything like this, but they've come in really handy for me on a few occasions. And what they're for is uh, for packing large, bulky items like moose quarters, or I've, I've actually backpacked rafts on this pack frame. Uh, what the, the straps on the pack, even when they're extended all the way out, and clipped together are not long enough to accommodate really large bulky loads. So I had these made up and all you do is you just get a couple of Fastex buckles. Uh, they're a nylon plastic buckle, the same ones that are used on your pack. You clip one into your top flap, you clip the other end into the strap on the bottom and now you've got a really huge strap here that you can use for packing firewood, rafting equipment, big moose quarters, whatever. So those extension straps are really handy to have. And I'll take a pair of those with me and I just throw them down here deep in my side pocket. Another item that I keep in my side pockets all the time is uh, a small amount of electrical tape and some spare pack frame pins. Now I've never broken a pack frame pin in the field, but I have inspected my pack after some of my trips and I've seen some of them were severely bent and about ready to break. So, a, spare, a couple of spare pins and some uh, electrical tape will really help you out in the field. The electrical tape, uh, sometimes you'll get a pack frame that starts squeaking on you while you're hunting and that noise can travel a long ways. And remember, I'm wearing my pack while I'm out there in the field hunting. So any noises like that, a metallic squeak is really a bad idea. So I'll take a little bit of electrical tape and if I have a pin that starts to squeak, I'll just run some tape around it and keep it from moving around and it'll quiet it down. So I'll take those in the side pocket of my pack. A few other items you need. Okay, we already talked about the game bag, so I'll set those over here. Definitely a mosquito head net. I should probably be wearing it right now. You can see I'm swatting bugs. They are all over me right now. But a mosquito head net will uh, really be a lifesaver out on that kill site. Just cover yourself up. Also, I like to wear nitrile gloves, or if you're not allergic to latex, wear a latex glove, and that'll keep the bugs off your hands while you're working and it can prevent you from getting um, diseases from the kill. Uh, occasionally people will develop an allergic reaction to the animal if they get a cut while they're working. So you can put those gloves on, it really helps a lot. But the head net's really important. I've got a little uh, gallon Ziploc bag here, and this is what I put my field care tools in. Uh, so these are some of the things I use when I'm out in the field. Uh, first of all, you want a couple of knives. Uh, these knives are made by Heli out of Norway. H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. They're really sharp. Excellent knife for caping and skinning and taking your animal apart at the kill site. Um, I always bring two knives and the reason for that is because if you're working on that animal and you were to set the knife down somewhere and you forget where you put it, you could lose a knife at the kill site or you could break a blade or something. So having a backup knife is really important. And of course I'll make sure that I sharpen my knives before I leave for the field so they're ready to go. I'll put those in a Ziploc bag. Uh, there's another knife that came out fairly recently made by a company called Havilon. I don't have one here with me today, but uh, the Havilon knives are excellent. They use a razor blade, um, and the, the problem with those knives is that the blade, if you side load it a little bit, if you're prying at all, uh, you can snap the blade. They do make a heavier blade uh, that's less likely to break, so I recommend that you look at those and make sure you bring about 10 or 12 spare blades. Uh, in that sheath that comes with your Havilon, you'll get some spare blades. Make sure you get those heavy ones. I recommend that you do not try to change those blades by hand. Uh, if you do that and your hand's going to have grease and fat and blood on it from working on your animal and you can slip and cut yourself really badly on those blades. So um, I use a Leatherman tool. Just use the pliers on your Leatherman and pull those blades off and, and use that to change out your blades. Otherwise you can create a problem for yourself. Uh, of course, I need sharpening equipment. Uh, this is a little Easy Lap diamond sharpener. Folds up and goes into the handle. Pretty slick little deal. So I'll take one of those with me. Uh, this is another one made by Easy Lap. Uh, it's a diamond sharpener too, and it comes in its own little sheath. It's got a screw fitting on it. Makes a little handle, and it's just like a steel that you would use in your kitchen. So I bring a couple of those. If I've got a knife that gets really dull on me out in the field and I need to put a quick edge on it, I'll use something like this. And you just run your knife blade right through here and it'll, uh, take an, it'll put an edge on it really fast. I also bring a uh, saw 
and I use this saw, I don't remove the quarters with the saw, but I use this for removing antlers. So I'll cut through the skull on a moose or a sheep or what have you. And uh, so the saw is really handy to have. This is just a cheap saw made by a company called Coglins. I don't recommend this saw. It's got a flat blade. And so you're tempted to cut on the push stroke and on the pull stroke. When you cut on the push stroke, the blade can flex and that's when it's going to break. And I've broken a lot of these in the field. So if you're going to use a cheap saw like this, these run about 10 or 12 bucks at Walmart. Uh, I recommend that you pick up two saws or at least get a couple of spare blades and uh, put some duct tape on the teeth and throw that in your uh, kit. That way you've got them in case you do break a blade. Uh, there's another company that makes a uh, curved blade and it works a lot better because you can only cut on the pull stroke and we have that in our gear list on the site. Uh, that one has a big bulge at the end of the handle also, so your hand's not going to slip off of it when you've got that grease and slime on your hand from working on the animal. So it, it'll keep your hand on there and it cuts on the pull stroke so you can zip through that skull really fast. I also use the saw for removing the ribs. I like to bring the ribs out on the bone and uh, some game management units you're required to do that. Most units you're not, but uh, they keep a lot better in the field that way and it makes really good short ribs if you want to cook those ribs up at home. So what I'll do is I'll use my saw to run a, uh, a saw cut right up the brisket and then I'll cut them off right at the spine. Uh, you can take the ribs off with your knife also because they're connected to the spine by cartilage and they're also connected to the brisket bone by cartilage and if you take your time and you've got a good sharp knife you can take them off just through the cartilage without even using a saw at all. That's really the best way to go because if you end up with sharp edges of bone which you will if you cut with your saw, uh, those edges can cut your game bags and flies can get in your game bags and lay eggs on your meat and that's really a bad deal. So a saw is really good. The alternative to the saw is a hatchet. Uh, obviously you're not going to take a hatchet on a backpack trip because they're just too heavy. Uh, this particular hatchet is made by Estwing and um, this is one of their camper's axes. It's got kind of a mid-sized handle. It's not a real short one, but it's not an axe. It's not a really long one. On float trips, I use these extensively, especially on timbered rivers where uh, it's likely that we might run into a sweeper or a strainer or even a tree that's down all the way across the river. Uh, we'll need a hatchet and or a chainsaw in that situation. So I need that while I'm on the river. Uh, typically what I'll do is I'll leave this in the boat and then uh, on my last load, when I'm getting ready to pack the antlers and cape out, I'll backhaul that hatchet with me. And I'll tell you, there is nothing faster, unless it's a chainsaw, nothing faster for getting antlers off of a moose skull than a good uh, sharp hatchet. So the S-Wing hatchet, I really like. I don't have to worry about the head flying off of it. There's no maintenance to these things at all. It's got a rubber handle on it, and it's got a lot of uses around camp anyway. Make sure you sharpen yours up really good, and it'll be ready to go. A couple of other items that I put in my field care kit is a small tape measure. Um, this is just a little one made by Stanley. I think I got it at Home Depot. It only goes out to 10 feet, so I don't know if it's going to measure my moose very well, but ah, I'm just kidding. But uh, you want to get a small tape measure. Uh, that's one of the things every hunter wants to know is how wide the antler spread was and so on. So small tape measure, handy to have. And then uh, some flagging tape. This isn't nearly enough. I usually bring a couple rolls or three rolls. What I do with my flagging tape is, after I get done processing my animal at the kill site, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a stick, just get a big long willow switch or whatever you can find, and jam the end of that in the carcass and tie a piece of flagging tape around the top of it. Um, what happens is if a, if a bear comes in on that kill while you're packing your animal into camp, um, he's going to usually relocate that kill almost every time. They're going to pick that thing up and drag it somewhere and get it off in the brush before they start feeding on it. Not always, but most of the time they're going to relocate that thing. So uh, when they do that, they're going to knock that stick down. So when you're approaching the kill site from a distance, uh, you can see where that stick is supposed to be. And if it's not there, there's a good chance of bears on that kill. So you can be on high alert. You should be on high alert status anyway when you come into a kill site. Just assume that an animal's on it. Make lots of noise, clap like that, yell, hey bear, hey bear, and then run him out of there if, he, if he's there. Uh, what I also like to do is cut a shoot, couple of shooting lanes into, into the kill site. So when I'm at that kill site, I can look over this direction and look over this direction. If I can see 100 yards or so, uh, 
away from that kill site, then I'm good to go. But if there's something in the way, some brush or something, I might want to knock a few limbs down just so I can see all the way into that kill site. The idea behind that is that I can approach uh, letting the wind blow my scent into the kill, but I can also glass that kill and see if there's another animal on it. Uh, from a safety standpoint. The other thing I do with my flagging tape is I'll flag my trail on the way out uh, to the river or to camp or what have you and that way I can find my way back to that kill. Of course I'm going to take a GPS uh, position fix on that kill site but having that flagging tape up in the tree is really nice uh, when you're packing those heavy moose quarters you don't have to uh, worry about watching your GPS every step of the way you can just beeline it right through the woods right to that kill site. Uh, be sure to take your flagging tape down on your last load out. Um, even if it's the biodegradable stuff, uh, that stuff's going to sit around for a while and it's just better that people don't know you were in there and that sort of thing. So take that flagging tape on the way out, uh, take it all down and put it in your pack and throw it away when you're done. Uh, that's pretty much it on the field care equipment. Uh, there's some other minor details, uh, but we have a complete gear list on the website uh, and we also have specific brand name recommendations. I gave you a few brand names here. Um, that you can go by, but there's certainly others. Good luck on your hunt.